Welcome back, everyone. Today, we're going deep, deep into the world of John Taylor, <laughs> the nope. water poet of Which London. The water poet, yes. Wrote all kinds of poems and pamphlets back in the 1600s. He did. But what makes this deep dive particularly interesting is that mm -hmm. our source material yeah. hints that Taylor mm -hmm. might not have been who he claimed to be at all. Right. We're going to be exploring some excerpts mm -hmm. from a YouTube video okay. that presents a fascinating theory. Mm -hmm. Buckle up, because it suggests yeah. that John Taylor could have been the playwright Christopher Marlowe. Wow. That's, and guys. That's a captivating theory. It yeah. really makes you think twice about yeah. what we think we know about John Taylor. For sure. And if it's true, and Marlowe actually faked his death in 1593. Right. And just kept writing under a different name. Yeah. Well, that would be. You would be huge. That would be a major discovery. It would rewrite literary history. It would. So let's uh, let's unpack this a little bit. Okay. So the YouTube video starts by analyzing okay. Taylor's first published work. All right. It's a prom. Yeah. Called The Scholar from 1612. Okay. And they point out that this poem mm -hmm. has a very complex acrostic dedication. Oh, wow. Now, just creating an acrostic like that yeah. takes a lot of skill, it right? It does, yeah. Even for a seasoned poet. Absolutely. So is it even plausible right. that a young, unknown poet, yeah. like Taylor was supposed to be at the time, right. could have put that off right. for a deed you work? That's one of the first red flags that the video raises okay. because it goes even deeper than that. Okay. It analyzes the content of the scholar okay. and finds these autobiographical element uh -huh. where the poet talks about right. enduring all these storms and this calumny mm -hmm. and if we look at what we know about john taylor's life yeah leading up to 1612 right those details don't really fit so what are we saying mm -hmm. are we saying that those descriptions mm -hmm. actually point to christopher marlowe's life yeah because yeah. he certainly had his share of controversy. He did. Before his supposed death. Yeah, that's the implication that the YouTube video is making. Okay. It suggests that the scholar right. might be more than just a poem. Yeah. It might be Taylor. Right. Or rather Marlowe, right. like subtly revealing his hidden past All through right. this persona. So if this theory holds any water, mm -hmm. it means that John Taylor. Yeah. Was just a name, a pseudonym for Marlowe to keep him. writing. Exactly. And the video goes even further. Oh wow! It claims that other writers from that era, oh really, like Nicholas Breton, mm. Samuel Rollins, okay, were also pseudonyms. Okay. Used by Marlowe. Wow. And to back that up, okay, the video analyzes yeah. dedications, mm. other elements, okay, in Taylor's early work, and finds all these hints mm -hmm. that suggest. Yeah. Yeah. A level of fame uh, yeah. that wouldn't really line up with um, Taylor's supposed yeah. humble beginnings as a waterman. Yeah, so it's like someone yeah. with an established reputation trying Stop to play really their path. They're trying to hide. Yeah, exactly. Let's uh, that, let's shift gears a bit okay. and talk about John Taylor's public image. Okay. This persona he so carefully cultivated mm -hmm. as the king's water poet. Right. Right. He really embraced... He did. That working class identity. Yeah. Traveling along the Thames. Mm hmm Writing about his experiences. Yeah. But is there any chance yeah. that even this carefully crafted persona okay. might be a fabrication? Well, the historian Bernard Cap, oh. who has done tons of research on John Taylor, okay. he highlights some really curious inconsistencies oh, in no. Taylor's writings, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to his relationship with a fellow writer named Tom Coriat. Which brings up a good point. Yeah. If they were both active yeah. in London's literary scene, right. why is there this yeah. complete lack of acknowledgement between them? Right. Taylor wrote extensively about Coriat. Yeah. And yet, there's no record of them ever meeting in London. Huh. And Coriat, for his part, never even mentions John Taylor. It's weird. At all yeah. in any of his works. That is strange. So the YouTube video yeah. proposes this kind of okay. pretty audacious idea all right. that both Taylor and Coriat uh -huh. might have been okay. fictional creations. Wow. Essentially literary tools okay. that Marlowe was using yeah. to explore right. themes. Yep. Different perspectives mm. under these different identities. Yeah, I see. That's a bold claim. It is. If Taylor was totally made up, yeah. wouldn't someone have noticed? Right. I mean, there must have been people <laughs> who knew the real John Taylor. Right. 
And that's where it gets even more interesting okay. because outside of his own writing, right. there's very little like independent verification wow. of John Taylor's life. Okay. It's almost as if he just appeared on the literary scene yeah. fully formed. Fully formed as it. the water poet. Wow, this is this is getting more and more interesting. It is. We've yeah. got this mysterious first work right. hints of a hidden identity. Mm-hmm. Now, potentially a completely made up persona. <laughs> where do we go from here? Well, the YouTube video continues to investigate okay. by examining yeah. some of Taylor's later works, okay. focusing on a poem okay. called Taylor's Motto, mm -hmm. which was published in 1621. Okay. And this is where things take an yeah. even more fascinating turn. Okay. Because this work reveals some intriguing parallels oh. to the writings of none other than William Shakespeare. I was wondering when Shakespeare was going right. to enter the picture. Of course he had to. Tell me more. Okay, so so one example the video highlights is the use of the ebb and flow metaphor. Okay. It appears in both Taylor's motto yeah. and Shakespeare's Henry IV, part one. Mm -hmm. Both works kind of use this imagery right. to describe shifting fortunes. Okay, but was that a mm -hmm. common metaphor back uh, yeah. then? Yeah. Or is it unique enough to suggest a connection right. between the two authors. That's a valid point. Yeah. It's not like they're using identical lines of text. Right. The video doesn't really delve into yeah. how common that ebb and flow metaphor was at yeah. the time. Okay. So yeah, it's certainly possible that both writers were just yeah. drawing on this yeah. common literary device. Okay. But then there's another connection. Okay. This one even more specific. Okay. That links Taylor's poetry to you guessed it. Good. Christopher Marlowe. Okay. In Taylor's motto, mm -hmm. there's this cryptic reference Stone. to something called the triple three. The triple three. Yeah. In relation to Marlowe's poem, Hero and Leander. That's interesting. Yeah. I want to know more about this triple yeah. three connection. Okay. What is that and why is it significant? So Hero and Leander. Yeah. It was originally registered for publication in 1593, okay. but it wasn't actually printed okay. until five years later in 1598. Okay. And then that same year, yeah. two additional versions of the poem oh, mm. emerged. Really? One was an extension by George Chapman oh, yeah. and the other a continuation yep. by Henry Patel. So there are three distinct mm -hmm. versions yeah. of this poem yeah. by three different authors. Supposedly all appearing within a short period. Yes, it is. Yeah. Unusual. It is. It is. It is. Yeah. And this whole unusual situation right. is what the YouTube video is referring to as the triple three. Okay. Now remember, yeah. the core theory here, mm -hmm. Marlowe faked his death, yeah. went into hiding. Right. So what if he then used the names Chapman and Pateau okay. as pseudonyms to mm -hmm. continue working on his poem? So that's where the triple three comes in. Right. Could it be? Exactly. That Taylor was just. Well, it's possible. Admiring Marlowe's work. Right. And was just emulating his style. Sure. I mean, Hero and Leander was a popular. It's very popular. Influential poem. For sure. It, it's possible. But yeah. the video argues that the triple three reference. Okay. Is a detail that Taylor wouldn't have known. Right. Unless he was Marlowe. Okay. It's just yeah. a level of insider knowledge that yeah. can have just come from like yeah. casual reading or admiration. All right. So we've got Taylor's early work. Yeah. Potentially alluding to Marlowe's life. Right. Then later we have this triple yeah. three reference. Uh huh. That suggests an even deeper connection. Right. And all of this is happening. Yeah. With this meticulously crafted persona. Yeah. Yeah. The King's Water Poet. Right. Which might have been completely fabricated. It's starting to feel like a really elaborate literary game. Yeah. And the game yeah. might involve even more players. Okay. Around the same time that Taylor's motto was published, mm -hmm. another poem okay. titled Wither's Motto came out. Okay. Written by a poet named George Wither. Another motto. But, yeah, right. What are the chances? Yeah. Two motto poems yeah. coming out around the same time. And the similarities between the two poems okay. are striking. Oh, really? They're both deeply personal, okay. autobiographical. Okay. They both have around 1,300 verses. Wow. And they're both divided into yeah. three sections. So it's more than just a coincidence. It's almost like right. the same mind yeah, exactly. was behind yeah. both work. <laughs> Yeah, and like yeah. intentionally creating this mirrored structure. Yeah. That's what the video proposes. Right. And to make things even more complex, yeah. George Wither himself <laughs> drops a hint about using multiple pen names. Wow, really? 
in Withers motto. Okay. He states that his real name yeah. should be obscured with 20 after it. So we potentially have right. both Taylor and Wither yeah. concealing their true identity. Yeah. Playing this like this intricate literary game. Yeah, so if we entertain this theory, yeah. what does it mean for how we understand John Taylor's work? I it completely changes how we approach it. Really? If John Taylor was indeed yeah. one of Christopher Marlowe's masks, right. it transforms how we read his what? poems and pamphlets. So we'd have to reconsider everything. Yeah. Looking for yeah. hidden layers of meaning. Hidden clues. Clues to his true identity. Maybe even coded messages. You'd be like mm. decoding a secret message. Exactly. Hidden in plain sight. Right. But beyond yeah. Yeah. this historical puzzle. Yeah. Is there a bigger takeaway? Yeah, that's a great question. For us today, yeah. why should we care right. about the true identity right. of a poet yeah. who lived centuries ago? I think this deep dive into John Taylor yeah. highlights something really crucial. Okay, There might be hidden stories, uh -huh. untold truths yeah. beneath the surface of well, what we accept as history. It encourages us to question yes. assumptions so mentions, right. and to remain open to yeah. these alternative interpretations, yeah, even when they seem unconventional, right, challenging, yeah, it makes you wonder how many other exactly historical figures right. might be hiding in plain sight, right, under these assumed names, absolutely, and that's the beauty uh, of this exploration. Yeah. It's not about it's not about finding definitive answers. Yeah, it's about embracing the mystery, right, asking the tough questions, mm -hmm. and recognizing that the past yeah. is far more complex and layered. Yeah. Than we might imagine. Maybe. Just maybe. Right. By exploring these yeah. hidden identities. The hidden identities of figures like John Taylor. Yeah. Yeah. We can gain a deeper understanding. Exactly. Of ourselves. Yes. And the stories we tell. And the stories about our own lives. That we tell about our own lives. Yeah. It really is a reminder that truth can be elusive. For sure. And things aren't always what they seem. Yeah. We've uncovered so much in this dive. Mm-hmm. But I feel like we've only just scratched the surface. Yeah. I, There's just so much more to explore yeah. with Taylor's work. Absolutely. Marlowe's life. The yeah. whole literary landscape of yeah, oh, Elizabethan England. The whole literary scene. Yeah. And that's what makes it so captivating. Right. It's just yeah. it's not just about the historical facts. Right. It's about the power of storytelling mm -hmm. and these yeah. enduring mysteries right. that are at the heart of literature. The YouTube video definitely presented some it did. compelling arguments mm -hmm. and evidence. Yeah. But it's really just... It's just a starting point. Starting point. Yeah. What are your thoughts yeah. mm -hmm. on all of this? Um, do, you do you think there's enough evidence to suggest yeah. that John Taylor actually was Christopher Marlowe? It's a tough one, or I the, think. Were other writers yeah. part of this elaborate literary but, game? I don't know. It's a puzzle. It's you, no easy answers. It is a puzzle, but that's what makes it so... But that's what makes it so fascinating. Right, exactly. If you're intrigued by yeah. what we talked about today, mm -hmm. go check out the sources for yourself. Yeah, definitely. Dive into it, the works. Yeah, cool. The works of John Taylor. Yeah, Taylor, Marlowe. Christopher Marlowe. George yeah. Wither. George Wither. All of them. Look for the connections. Yeah. The patterns. See what you find. Maybe some hidden clues. Yeah, draw your own... Draw your own conclusions. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe you'll find something... Right. That we missed. You might uncover yeah. something we totally missed. Or you might even develop yeah. your own theory right. about the true identity right. of John Taylor. Yeah. That's the beauty of a deep dive like this. Yeah. It sparks. It sparks curiosity. Curiosity. It encourages us. Yes, it does. To be active participants. It does. In the discovery process. Yeah. It's not about. Just it's not about passively passively absorbing information absorbing information right yeah it's about it's about engaging with the material engaging with the material asking questions asking questions forming your own interpretations forming your own interpretations that's it we've offered our glimpse mm -hmm. into the world of john taylor we have and this possibility that um, he might have been a mask might have been for christopher marlowe for christopher marlowe but the real journey begins. Yes. That's when you start exploring yeah. those sources yourself. Absolutely. Forming your own opinions. Yeah. And maybe even uncovering yeah. new layers. New layers of this, yeah, of this uh, literary mystery. Literary mystery. Yeah. And remember, yeah. sometimes How? the most intriguing stories yeah. are the ones that remain. That remain unsolved. Unsolved. For sure.
the questions that linger yeah. long after after the discussion discussion ends yeah. are often the most rewarding ones. They are. They are. So embrace yeah. the ambiguity. Embrace it. Stay curious. So stay curious. And enjoy the journey. And enjoy the journey of exploration. Of exploration. That's what it's all about.